Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are diving into something really cool and super useful if you are working with microservices or just want to manage your APIs efficiently. We are going to set up an API gateway in ASP.NET Core using Ocelot. I promise to keep it simple and easy to follow. So let's get started. Alright, let's talk about what we are building. Imagine you have multiple microservices or APIs, and you don't want your clients to deal with the complexity of calling each service directly. That's where an API gateway comes in. It acts like a traffic cop, directing requests to the appropriate service. Today we are going to create a super basic API gateway that will route requests to a backend API. It's going to be awesome. Ocelot is an open source API gateway designed specifically for .NET Core applications. It acts as a middleman between your clients and your microservices or APIs, handling the routing of requests, security, load balancing, and more. Ocelot is ideal for managing requests in a microservice architecture, where multiple services are deployed independently and need a centralized point to manage incoming requests. So here's the game plan. Over the next few videos, we'll be breaking down each of Ocelot's key features one by one. These are the tools that will take your microservices set up from good to great. Here's what we are tackling. 1. Routing 2. Authentication and authorization 3. Load balancing 4. Rate limiting 5. Caching 6. Request aggregation Today we are starting off with the first and arguably the most fundamental feature, routing. Without routing, nothing else matters because we need to make sure our requests are getting to the right place. Okay, let's create our backend API. This is the service that will do the actual work and our API gateway will just pass requests to it. Fire up Visual Studio or your favorite ID and create a new ASP.NET Core Web API project. Let's name it Target API Sample. Nothing too fancy here. Once it's up, you should see the usual boilerplate stuff. Let's keep it simple for now. Hit that run button or press Ctrl plus F5 to start the target API sample. Make sure it's running on port 5001. If it's on a different port, that's cool. Just remember it. Alright, backend API done. Now let's move on the fun part, setting up our API gateway. Next up, let's create our API gateway. This is where Ocelot comes in. It's a lightweight API gateway. That's perfect for .NET Core. Let's get it going. Create another project. This time call it API Gateway Sample. Again, nothing fancy here. It's just another web API project, but this one is going to be our gateway. Now let's bring in Ocelot. Open up your NuGet package manager and search for Ocelot and then install it. Next, we need to tell Ocelot how to route our requests. In the root of the API Gateway Sample project, create a new file called ocelot.json. Here's what we are gonna put in it. The ocelot.json file is the configuration file where you define how Ocelot should behave as an API Gateway. This file controls the routing, load balancing, authentication, and other features that Ocelot provides. Let's dive deeper into the structure of this file and some of its key settings. This file typically has two main sections. One, routes, formerly known as a reroutes. This section defines how requests should be routed from the API gateway to downstream services. Two, global configuration. This section defines global settings that apply across all routes. Downstream path template. This setting defines the path on the downstream service that Ocelot will route the request to. When a request comes into the API gateway, this template tells Ocelot where to forward the request on the downstream service. Downstream scheme. Specifies the protocol used to communicate with the downstream service HTTP or HTTPS. This setting tells Ocelot whether to use HTTP or HTTPS for routing the requests. Downstream host and ports. This is an array of host and port pairs 
that define where the downstream service is running. Ocelot uses these values to determine the destination address for forwarding the request. Upstream path template. This defines the path on the API gateway that the client will use to make requests. This setting maps the external path used by clients to the internal path used by Ocelot for routing to the correct downstream service. Upstream HTTP method it specifies the HTTP methods that are allowed for this route. This ensures that only the specific HTTP methods can be used for a given route. For example, if a route only supports GET request, POST request to this route will be blocked. Base URL defines the base URL for the API gateway, which can be used for things like generating URLs for redirects. Okay, what's going on here? We are telling Ocelot that whenever a request comes to API weather on our gateway, it should forward that request to our target API sample service running on this route. Simple and clean. Now let's get Ocelot wired up in our program.cs. We need to register the Ocelot services so that our app knows it's going to be using Ocelot as an API gateway. This is super easy, just one line of code inside program.cs. This line tells your application I'm going to use Ocelot, so load up all the necessary stuff. It adds all the services Ocelot needs to function, like routing, load balancing, and so on, into the service container. Next, after registering the services, you need to actually tell your app to use Ocelot as part of its request handling process. This is where the middleware comes in. This line adds Ocelot into the middleware pipeline, meaning that when your app receives an HTTP request, Ocelot will step in, decide where to route the request and send it off to the right downstream service. It's like setting up a traffic cop that directs your requests to the correct service. Great, let's walk through the process of testing out target API sample and gateway API sample projects using Postman, step by step. This will include setting a breakpoint testing the API via the gateway and ensuring everything is routed correctly. Our target API is a downstream service that Ocelot will route requests to. Typically, this is a simple ASP.NET Core Web API project with a controller like Weather Forecast Controller. Ensure that your API target sample project is running and it's configured to listen on port 5001. In your weather forecast controller, set a breakpoint inside the get method or any other method you want to test. This will allow you to pause the execution and inspect what's happening when a request hits this endpoint. Our gateway API sample project uses Ocelot to route incoming requests from Postman to the target API sample. Make sure your ocelot.json is configured to route requests from port 5000 to port 5001. Now you will test the setup using Postman. Open Postman, set the request method to get, enter the URL that matches the upstream path in your ocelot.json file, click the send button in Postman, Postman will send the request to the gateway API sample running on port 5000. If everything is configured correctly, the request will be routed by Ocelot to your target API sample on port 5001. The breakpoint you set earlier in the get method of the weather forecast controller will be hit. This means the request has successfully reached the target API sample. After you continue past the breakpoint by pressing F5 again or clicking continue, the get method will return a response. Postman should display the JSON response from the weather forecast controller. This confirms that the request was successfully routed through the gateway and processed by the target API sample project. Okay, today we went through the process of setting up routing in Ocelot using ASP.NET Core. We started by getting our target API up and running, set a breakpoint to see the request come in, and then wired up our gateway API to route those requests properly using Ocelot. We even tested everything out using Postman to make sure the routing from port 5000 to port 5001 was working as expected. I hope that you saw how straightforward it is to use Ocelot for API Gateway routing in .NET Core and that the process makes sense to you now. 
I've uploaded these projects to my GitHub account so you can check them out, play around with the code and try it out yourself. You will find the link in the description below. This video was just the first part of our series where we tackled routing in Ocelot, but there is so much more to cover. In the upcoming videos, we will dive into other essential Ocelot features like authentication and authorization, load balancing, rate limiting, caching, and request aggregation. So stay tuned for those because we will go deep into each one. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on the next tutorials. Also hit that notification bell so we get notified when the next video drop. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.